Hey everybody, welcome to Dad, Daughters, and Drinks, where you will always get at least two of those three. I am the Margarita Kid, and today I am drinking a margarita. Now I know that may sound like it would be a no-brainer, but this is the first margarita I've had in all of my reactions. Why? It's a special occasion. Why is it a special occasion? Because we are kicking off the uh, reactions to the entire Queen of the Murder Scene album. Uh, we're going to be doing the Live at Lunario concert. Uh, this is a really good margarita. I just made it with fresh squeezed limes, tequila, and some Grand Marnier. Uh, using the good stuff for this because this is worth it. So uh, first track is Dust to Dust. We're going to go ahead and get it. This is a uh, concert was in 2018. I think that puts them around 18, 16, and 13. Uh, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And so let's see how, uh, how they do. Everybody's been talking up this show for a long time, and I am finally ready to take the plunge. All right, so that's a cool picture in the background. And I, I don't know a lot about this album. I know that it's a concept album, and that you know some people have mentioned in comments that it's, it's kind of this girl who's obsessed by something. She kind of, uh, over time, descends into you know madness and... And I don't know what else, but uh, I'm assuming that's her. Uh, it's pretty cool artwork, actually. So uh, just wanted to call that out. I'm going to try not to pause too much, but I might get excited because this is going to be awesome, I can tell. Okay, before the singing starts, so a couple things that's really cool about that. So um, the bass lines, you know, a really great way to start off like that. And then this guitar melody comes in, and I like that it's not like too crazy. It's like a cool melodic kind of, you know, guitar line that's really, you know, really tasty, I guess I'll, I'll say. Uh, I'm excited about this. And it looks like Paul's going to be singing on this one. You know, I don't know... Um, didn't know that till just now, so let's take a look. And I'm actually, I want to pull up the lyrics uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, even though I have reacted to this song before, uh, I still just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Okay, so her singing's always fantastic. Sometimes she sings with kind of a clear. This is clearly her raspy kind of voice, but she just gave a look there, man. Right there. That's fantastic. That's not the look of somebody who's, you know, kind of doing 50% or who isn't emotionally connected to what she's doing. Uh, that's somebody who's really in intense mode. Uh, not that she's not as necessarily ever not in intense mode, but it's visually what's going on right now. I'm going back. Uh, I feel like, I hate to say I'm not going to pause a lot because I, I may be, but I'm trying not to. So lyrically, now you know. I think when I watched this the first time, um, it was a different concert, and I didn't realize that it was the opening track to this album. Um, and now that, like I said, I know a 
tiny little bit about the story or the plot line. Um, I like the way these lyrics are kind of setting this up, right? So right at the beginning, uh, look what I've prepared to show you, right? So you know that there's going to be a, a some kind of a presentation, a story, right? Uh, and then there's a lot of kind of dichotomy here, the dust to dust, but then starting again. Uh, and then this part about is it something worth losing, something worth pursuing? Uh, I think that goes along with the, the whole obsession thing. Uh, we shall see. Well, I mean, I'll see. You guys know. So there was somewhere in the Teatro concert, the guy came out and was giving kind of a little mini sermon like that. Was that a part of this song? I didn't remember there being music behind it. Or was that something completely unrelated and I'm just misremembering? Uh, but I remember the guy did come out and, you know, say something um, about salvation. So let me know. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. I always love those kind of Middle Eastern harmonic minor runs. Uh, so to do that vocally is really cool. Let me hear that again. All right, so that was great. Uh, I'm actually excited to watch the whole thing after this. Uh, I'm gonna, I think my goal is to try and get one video out a day. We'll see how that goes. But that was a great way to open the concert uh, and the whole album. Uh, like I said, it makes a little bit more sense to me now in the context of that being the opening track of a, of a, of a concept album that tells a story. And... I feel like this version of it was to me a lot more clear, I guess, of a recording than the first one I listened to. I think I it, just the music seemed a little crisper, the vocals seemed a little crisper. I don't know if it's just because I'm familiar with the version already, so I can you know focus on certain things a little better musically than I did the first time. Uh, but I I 
feel like I liked this performance better. Now, maybe I'll go back and watch the other one and go, no, I like that one better. But at the moment, this is the one that I've preferred. Uh, and I think if it were almost any other, they were so animated on the stage. Like, I think more animated than I remember seeing them in any of their any of the other concerts that I've watched. Uh, not that I've watched a ton of them, right? Uh, I watched a couple of tracks from an M the MTV Live thing. I watched the Teatro thing, but they seemed really animated here. Uh, animated enough that I think if I were at the concert and it were any other band that were that animated, I think I would be concerned that they wouldn't be able to keep that energy level for the whole show uh, with these girls. I think I know better than to be concerned about that. Uh, if there's one thing they always seem to have abundantly is energy. Now, I'm sure they're actually getting, you know, at some point exhausted and fighting through it. Uh, but it never shows, at least not that I've seen physically. Uh, so this was great. Uh, I think the next track is called, uh, is it Queen Crimson? Crimson Queen? Queen Crimson? Something like that. It's one of those two. And I remember when I, because I looked at the track list, I saw that and it made me think of the band uh, King Crimson, um, which was an old kind of 70s prog rock band that did a lot of concept albums. Uh, and they had a, a really great album called The Court of the Crimson King. Um, and I wouldn't have normally thought that maybe that was kind of an inspiration, you know, maybe not from the actual story, but uh, just the term. Except that in my reaction to the 21st Century Blood, somebody pointed out in the comments that the baby... Uh, Incubator had the number, I think it was what, 90125 on it, which is an old Yes album. Uh, has the famous Owner of a Lonely Heart on it, if you're familiar with that song. Um, yes, another one of those kind of 70s prog rock bands. And so I know their parents, I, I think I've read that they you know played them a lot of classic rock when they were younger. Uh, and so maybe they know, you know, Yes, maybe they know King Crimson. And so maybe the Court of the Crimson King and King Crimson were, you know, in some way, small way, uh, an inspiration for the track of the next song. Although, like I said, I can't remember if it's Crimson Queen or Queen Crimson. Um, I guess I could, no, I'll just look later. Anyway, thanks for uh, sticking with me through this. This was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the rest of them. And um, I will see you soon. And, you know, if you're there on the next one, I'll see you. And if not, thanks for watching. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks.